Hello, Gages Lake. Hope you're having a great week so far. Today is June the 30th, and uh, we're already at the end of June. That's crazy. Um, but I hope that you're having a, a great week. Uh, we are right in the midst of summertime, and uh, we've got, um, well, there's not much going on <laughs> as far as uh, ministry is concerned. Everybody is uh, traveling or there's uh, a lot of things going uh, as far as family stuff as you as you look ahead through the summer but uh, we are excited about uh, the fall and returning our ministries uh, complete back to to pre-covid hopefully um, and so as we are looking ahead you consider and you prayerfully consider uh, jumping in and serving in some way uh, there's going to be uh, lots of opportunities, whether whether it's children's ministries or adult ministries. Uh, it's worship team, security, nursery, children's church, all on Sunday mornings, uh, small groups during the week, Awana on Wednesdays, like uh, youth group. Uh, there's all kinds of different opportunities for us to uh, serve one another in the kingdom. And so uh, as we look ahead, you prayerfully consider how God would lead you to uh, to be a part of, of these amazing things and as we serve together and grow together and uh, I, I'm excited about uh, moving forward uh, into the fall so uh, anyway I just wanted to share a quick thought today from uh, the Word of God and as we noticed this past Sunday we introduced this concept of why Jesus taught in parables and starting this Sunday and going through July and into the first of August, we'll be looking at uh, some of the, the parables of Jesus and the kids. You guys are going to be in there with us and I've got a special treat for uh, the kids each week. So uh, anyway, um, but as Jesus taught in parables and, you know, I mentioned Sunday that there was roughly 30 some parables that he spoke uh, that are recorded in the Gospels. And we have like five or six weeks. And so, of course, we're not going to be able to get to all the parables. But then I thought maybe I should talk about some of the parables uh, in the Wednesday update. Maybe that gives us a little more um, opportunities to look at some parables that are uh, smaller or they don't get the, the pump and circumstance like the, some of the bigger ones do. Like everyone knows the prodigal son or the good Samaritan. But some of these smaller ones, maybe we don't get to chance to get to as much and so I thought maybe I'd just share a few thoughts from uh, these smaller parables or these other parables uh, of Jesus and I think all of them are valuable we talked about that this past week that all of them have a purpose and they're trying to teach us something so anyway uh, I'm today again in Matthew chapter 13 uh, we looked at that this past week in that middle section about why he spoke in parables. And Matthew 13 has a lot of parables. You have the parable of the sower, the parable of the weeds, the parable of the mustard seed, the parable of the hidden treasure, the parable of the pearl of great value, the parable of the net, the parable of new and old treasures. Like there's just over and over. There's like, like that's Matthew's kind of like, boom, here are a lot of parables of Jesus. Uh, and as we look at some of these, we'll be looking at the sower and stuff on, on Sunday and uh, future future week. Uh, but anyway, there's a couple here that are actually two parables in three verses. So two parables in three total verses. Uh, and I think that they're similar. I think there's some great teaching there. Uh, so I'm looking at Matthew 13 and I'm reading verses 44 through 46. Matthew 13, 44 through 46. Uh, Jesus says this, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who, on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it. This, 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 these two little parables, one of the hidden treasure and one of the, the sometimes called the pearl of great price, okay, uh, the, the ESV uses pearl of great value. Uh, in both of these, it, it's, so they're very short, they're very uh, uh, um, concise, but I think there's some great truth here. Uh, 
both of them say the kingdom of heaven. And as we looked at this past Sunday, the kingdom of heaven, what are we talking about? Uh, I personally believe we're talking about salvation. We're talking about uh, Christ ruling, okay, or, or God ruling. So uh, when, when I read these, I see Jesus saying, hey, salvation is like a person who finds a treasure. Is like a person searching for pearls and finds one of great value. Okay, let me let me just give you a little snippet here because it talks about how he goes and sells all that he has and then buys the field, or he goes and buys the the price. I am not. I don't believe that this is saying that you can earn your salvation. I don't think anyone can earn their salvation. The Bible is very clear. Remember, we don't build doctrine off of one ver off of one little thing, uh, one little parable. Uh, so. Uh, what is this talking about? I think that both of these uh, show the extreme value of salvation, of, of Jesus saying, listen, the kingdom of heaven is so valuable, it's like someone who has been searching for treasure their whole life and they find it and then they sell all they have and they go and they be part of that. They, they, they go and get that treasure or, or uh, the person searching for pearls and, and he finds one of great value and, and he sells all that he has because that's the most important to him. And I think the teaching there is Jesus is saying, listen, the kingdom of heaven salvation is so valuable is so amazing it's such an, a, a huge treasure it's a huge uh, a pearl if you will that it that someone who recognizes and someone who wants to be a part of that kingdom doesn't worry about material things doesn't worry about things here because they know that's so much better like like that is the most important thing to them. And I can imagine the disciples hearing the, these teachings going, well, that's, you know, interesting that they would sell all for that. Like, that's got to be some treasure. That's got to be some pearl because uh, to get rid of everything else for that? And Jesus is like, yes, yes. Like, like over and over again, he talks about that you seek first the kingdom of God, like like his righteousness. Um, over in uh, Philippians, he talks about uh, forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forward to things that are in, in front. Like like there's this constant reminder that that here is temporary. But there is what we're searching for, and that is the most valuable thing. And I can tell you, uh, it, well. I'm sure any any person who is mature, uh, any person who's in their faith and they have spent a long time and they've sought after Christ and, and they're a follower of Christ will tell you that is the most valuable thing. Like there's nothing on earth that compares to the value of following Jesus Christ. And so um, what an encouragement. What a, what a great thing. And just one final note. It says the pearl of great, the ESV says the pearl of great value. Uh, the pearl of great price, I think, is a, is a great word there because what was the price for our salvation? And that Jesus Christ is that treasure. Jesus Christ is that pearl because it was a great price for him to provide us a way of eternal life. And so uh, what, a, what a beautiful picture, both little parables talking about, hey, Jesus is the most important. Jesus is the the value. Jesus is the uh, thing that you want more than anything else. Both of the treasures were hidden, uh, which means spiritual truth. There are some people who will not, some people who will never, who will never discover Jesus Christ. But those of us who have discovered him, it's the most valuable thing that we can ever have. And so let us help others discover Jesus Christ. So Anyway, I hope that there was an encouragement to you. I hope that uh, as you look ahead and you look at your life, that you think and you remember that Christ is so valuable. Christ is so, uh, so important, and he's the most important thing that nothing else matters. I hope that you have a great week. Uh, please know that my wife and I love you. We, we are praying for you. Uh, you pray for them. They're leaving tomorrow. My wife and kids and in-laws are heading to Texas, so... Uh, I'm staying here uh, doing some work and stuff, So, uh, but you pray for them as they travel, and we look forward to seeing you on Sunday as we continue the parables of Jesus. Have a great week, everyone. We'll see you next week.